If you've ever seen Godzilla or just about any movie dealing with nuclear testing, you'll know that nothing good can come from nuclear weapons. And today we're proving that without the need for giant dinosaur lizards. Although, while it's only a matter of time before that situation kicks off, from a devastating American experiment to a Russian accident, let's take a look at 15 nuclear tests that went horribly wrong. <sighs> Number 15. Castle Bravo Thermonuclear Test we can never truly forget the devastation that comes from nuclear weapons. Even if they're just tests or experiments, the effects can linger for generations, causing all manner of chaos and long-lasting effects with no end in sight. The Castle Bravo thermonuclear test is one such example. In March 1954, the United States launched one of several dozen nuclear tests in the Marshall Islands. With 15 million tons of TNT, this weapon was a thousand times more powerful than the bomb that destroyed Hiroshima. And according to scientists, it was the largest explosion ever set off by Americans, as well as the most devastating. The long-term consequences of this testing led Bikini Island and its surrounding islands to be declared totally unsafe for human habitation. One weapon had rendered an entire area a quarantine zone. The radiation levels were determined to be much bigger than those found at Chernobyl or Fukushima. The incident ended up killing 460,000 people thanks to confusion. Those on neighboring atolls believed the falling radioactive debris to be nothing more than snow. Before long, they developed serious health conditions that ultimately brought them to a premature mature end. Just another example of the dangers that come with nuclear weaponry. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 14. Yanaska Radiation Accident if there's two words you don't want to see next to one another, it's nuclear and accident. Unfortunately, they seem to meet more times than anybody would like, and the 2019 Yanaska radiation accident was extremely unfortunate. But I think you probably already guessed that. According to Russian officials, the accident was the result of a fatal test for an isotope power source for a liquid-fueled rocket engine. However, science experts suspect that that the incident has a much more sinister reason behind it, the unintended result of testing a cruise missile. Regardless of what caused the incident, five military and civilian specialists were killed in the accident, and some people claim to have witnessed it. One of these witnesses, a fisherman, claimed that they saw a large hole in the side of a ship that had been at the site. So what exactly is the truth? Rocket power source gone wrong or a cruise missile gone right? Either way, nobody was actually supposed to die in testing this weapon, making it a highly unfortunate accident, but what exactly caused it is a mystery we'll probably never know the answer to, unless of course you just want to wildly speculate and make up your own answers. Feel free to do so. Number 13. Oak Ridge National Laboratory Y-12 Apparently, military nuclear accidents happen so often that there's a whole Wikipedia page for them, which you'd think would be a surefire sign that maybe this nuclear stuff isn't such a great idea. But hey, I guess they're the geniuses here, right? Anyway, let's talk about the Oak Ridge facility, a place that has had multiple, I repeat, multiple nuclear accidents. Geniuses? We're specifically talking about the February 2013 accident, which which saw a small explosion inside the facility. During the final testing of a new saltless uranium processing method, an unexplained explosion erupted followed by a fire. The problem was that the explosion happened in an unventilated vessel containing depleted uranium. I think you can see the problem here. The explosion breached the glove box, allowing air to enter and ignite the loose uranium powder. The whole thing was an unmitigated disaster, contaminating three employees 
employees. Great job, guys. You would think that people would, by now, be somewhat aware of the devastating effects that nuclear tests can have, but either people aren't paying attention or they just don't care. Either way, it's probably going to end with a kaiju-type situation down the line, and the movies will look like documentaries. I'm very confident about that. Number 12. The 2001 Georgia Radiation Accident on an otherwise ordinary day in 2001, three men drove from their village in Leah, Georgia, to collect firewood. Unfortunately, as with pretty much every story, things went very, very wrong. And I mean, very wrong. Well, you already know what the title of this video is. In the late afternoon, once the sun had gone down, the men discovered a pair of unusual objects, two metal cylinders in the forest path. These cylinders had managed to melt through the thick snow, leaving the soil around it smoking. As night fell over the forest, the men decided to sleep in the forest overnight, using these hot cylinders for warmth. But within a matter of hours, they all felt very sick and were unable to sleep. A week later, the men developed advanced symptoms, redness, swelling, painful blisters. Almost three weeks after encountering the cylinders, the men received their diagnosis, acute radiation syndrome. Bet you didn't see that one coming. The cylinders were, of course, the cylinders were, of course, strontium-90 sources that had been incorrectly abandoned in the forest. To give you an idea of how powerful this thing was, this kind of power source is typically used to power satellites and other space devices. So that's a lot of radioactive energy, right? Number 11. The Bainberry Test after the many nuclear catastrophes of the 1950s and 60s, the US government made the wise decision to ban atmospheric testing. They didn't, however, ban nuclear weapons. So when scientists wanted to test the capabilities of nuclear weapons, they just went underground. Nothing could possibly go wrong. The Bainberry test was one of these underground off-the-books experiments. On December 18, 1970, a group of scientists gathered at the Nevada test site where the nuclear bomb was buried over 900 feet in a 7-foot wide hole. But of course, the incident wouldn't be on this list if something didn't go horribly wrong. And about three minutes after the start of the test, that did happen. Almost 300 feet away from the bottom, a fissure opened up in the ground, releasing a cloud of radioactive chaos 8,000 feet into the atmosphere. That cloud managed to spread all across Nevada, California, and surrounding states, contaminating around 4 400 cars in total. While the US government did its best to decontaminate the affected areas, it was too late. Many people have been exposed to the radiation, with some contracting leukemia and passing away. So I guess the lesson here is that going underground is not always the best idea, right? Number 10. Starfish Prime Yes, even nuclear tests are sometimes named like Transformers. Starfish Prime is just one of many US nuclear tests from the 1960s, but it's notable for being one of the most catastrophic and disastrous in US history. Which is really saying something because, again, there have been quite a lot. On the 9th of July 1962, a Thor rocket carrying a W-49 thermonuclear warhead was launched from the Johnston Atoll in Hawaii. When it reached the correct altitude, the bomb successfully detonated, but the after-effects were much more severe than anybody could have anticipated. The electromagnetic pulse turned out to be far larger than was expected, sending much of the electrical equipment into chaos. And that's not even factoring in the damage being caused across Hawaii. 300 streetlights knocked out, burglar alarms set off en masse, and telephone company microwave links being destroyed too. In total, experts estimated that the explosion produced a force equivalent of 1.4 megatons of TNT. And you don't have to be a nuclear scientist to know that's not exactly a good thing, right? Or maybe I'm just totally out of touch with what is cool nowadays. That's totally possible. I mean, I was wrong about Kermit the Frog. Number 9. 1961 Goldsboro B-52 Crash 
Even in the best case scenario, a plane crash is pretty horrific. But when that plane happens to be carrying two nuclear bombs, even the best case scenario is nothing short of colossal devastation. The 1961 Goldsboro B-52 crash was disastrous, but it could have gone so much worse. On January 23, 1961, a Boeing B-52 Stratofortress carrying two 3-4 megaton Mark 39 nuclear bombs broke up in midair. As the plane fell apart, the two nuclear weapons dropped into free fall, heading for an area near Goldsboro, North Carolina. By this point, the pilot had lost control of the plane and ordered the crew to eject at around 9,000 feet. Five of them ejected and landed safely, one ejected and did not survive, and two died in the crash. And yet, miraculously, the bombs themselves did not actually detonate despite the impact. And that is what we would call lucky. In 2013, information was officially declassified that confirmed one of the bombs was very close to detonating. Had that actually happened, it's impossible to understand how catastrophic the whole situation would have been. According to one bomb disposal expert at the scene, a nuclear detonation would have totally changed North Carolina, as each bomb was around 250 times as powerful as the Hiroshima bomb. So I think it's fair to say that was not only lucky, but a straight-up miracle. Number 8. The Demon Core much like the Manhattan Project, it seems that U.S. nuclear scientists working during World War II had a gift for naming their projects. The Demon Core was a plutonium sphere that more than lived up to its name, having been responsible for two separate incidents. Actually, if you want to be historically accurate, the scientists never wanted to call it the Demon Core. This was simply a spherical plutonium core designed to be used for atomic bombs, but when the Japanese surrendered during the war, it was instead used for testing and had a pretty deadly impact on many scientists. In 1945, one physicist made a fatal mistake while performing neutron reflector experiments on the core. After accidentally dropping some neutron reflective tungsten carbide bricks onto the core, causing it to go into supercriticality, the physicist received a fatal dose of radiation and died just 25 days later. Less than a year later, in 1945, 46, overly confident physicist Lewis Lawton conducted a public experiment directly on the core with minimal safety precautions. Genius Italian physicist Enrico Fermi famously said that everyone in the room would be dead within a year. Sure enough, Slotten made a mistake, absorbing a huge amount of radiation and dying just nine days later, and that's how this thing became known as the Demon Core. Number 7. Atomic Ground Zero how much would you have to be paid to allow a nuclear missile to detonate 10,000 feet above your head? If you said anything other than there's no amount of money for me to do that, you have a serious problem because that's insane. On July 19th, 1957, five men stood at the Nevada test site waiting to witness an atomic test for themselves. They were there to see a two kiloton MB-1 nuclear air-to-air -air rocket to be launched from an F-89 Scorpion interceptor. But of course, there was another purpose for this very public display. The US government was attempting to show the public that they had nothing to fear about nuclear weapons. But as anybody with even one brain cell probably already knows, there's a lot you should fear about nuclear weapons. Not least of all that they're, you know, nuclear weapons. The bomb detonated 10,000 feet above the men's heads, emitting a bright light and a powerful sound wave that frightened everybody present. But to their surprise, everything was fine. They went back to their daily lives with absolutely nothing out of the ordinary happening, except for the fact that they all got cancer, a common side effect of exposure to nuclear materials. Somehow they all survived into their 80s, but there was never any sign of superpowers. So I guess the Hulk is just a major outlier here. Number 6. Storak Sedan Would you believe that at one point the US government 
actually believed that nuclear weapons could be used for something more productive than just warfare, it's probably not a massive surprise that the US did indeed look into ways they could profit from this incredible killing machine. In the early 1960s, the US government committed to a new program called Project Plowshare, hoping to use nuclear weapons for use as peaceful construction tools. If that sounds insane to you, it's because it is. The government hoped that the explosives could blast rocks, helping in mining or construction fields. That's not what happened. On July 6, 1962, the military detonated Sedan, a shallow underground nuclear bomb at a Nevada test center. They could never have expected what happened next but they really should have. The bomb was so powerful that it immediately shot up into a radioactive cloud that split into two separate plumes heading northeast and east. The nuclear fallout was dropped all along the way, landing in countries from Iowa to Illinois. In fact, some experts have cited that the sedan test has the most dangerous in American history because it contaminated more US residents than any other. I guess to sum it up, the lesson is that nuclear weapons should not be used for mining purposes, as if that was ever in question. Number 5. Tsar Bomba on October 30th, 1961, the largest nuclear weapon ever built was detonated. You may not know a whole lot about the Tsar Bomba, but it was one of the most formidable and dangerous weapons to exist during the Cold War. And it had, unsurprisingly, a pretty catastrophic testing period. The Tsar Bomba was a Russian creation which boasted a yield of 50 megatons. That's about 3,800 Hiroshima bombs detonated simultaneously. It's difficult to even imagine how much damage that could do to the world, but actually, Nikita Khrushchev was looking for a 100 megaton bomb. The only reason he didn't get it was because the scientists were concerned with the inevitable fallout. But back to October 30th, the bomb was airdropped to showcase the weapon's deliverability, but it became known for much, much, much more than that. Even though it detonated 2.4 miles above ground, the impact of the bomb was felt all over. The seismic shock wave was measured as equivalent to an earthquake measured at 5.0 on the Richter scale. Hundreds of miles away, people suffered severe side effects like third-degree burns and other concerning health difficulties. In terms of actual physical destruction, the test had proved that the bomb had a damage radius of around 21 miles. There's a reason nobody wants to build anything bigger than this. Number 4. Chernobyl Disaster Everybody has heard of the Chernobyl disaster, often cited as the worst nuclear accident in history, and honestly, that is a label that very much fits. This was a truly tragic incident, and the remnants continue to linger to this day. On April 26th, 1986, nuclear experts performed a safety test on an RBMK-type nuclear reactor. During a planned decrease of power in preparation for the test, the power dropped to almost zero, something that had never happened. The operators tried to restore the power for the test, but could only partially do so, leaving the reactor in a hazardous and unstable condition before continuing with their test. However, when they triggered the reactor shutdown, a combination of design flaws and instability led to a full-on nuclear chain reaction that destroyed the reactor core and building. The explosion killed two of the operating staff, and for the next nine days, the open-air reactor core fire released a lot of radioactive contamination all over the USSR and Western Europe. It would not be contained until the 4th of May. There's no way to know for sure how many deaths had been caused or otherwise amplified due to the Chernobyl disaster and no way to fully describe the damage, but even today the nuclear cleanup is ongoing and is scheduled to be completed by 2065. Number 3. Fukushima Daiichi Nuclear Disaster 
If the Chernobyl disaster is the worst nuclear accident in history, the Fukushima disaster is certainly a worthy runner-up. Coming right on the heels of the devastating 2011 Tohoku earthquake, Japan suffered a one-two punch, experiencing an unthinkable amount of damage in a very short time. On March 11, 2011, the active reactors at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant detected the earthquake and automatically shut down their power generator fission reactions. When the electricity supply failed, the diesel generator started, however the earthquake strength had also created an unimaginable 46-foot high tsunami, which swept over the seawall of the power plant and flooded the reactors, shutting down the generators entirely. Within an hour, the plant suffered three nuclear meltdowns, three hydrogen explosions, and the release of radioactive contamination into the atmosphere. It was a nuclear cocktail of bad luck and a serious health risk. the Japanese government took immediate action, evacuating people within a 12-mile radius. Around 154,000 residents were evacuated from their homes due to the radioactive fallout. And it's not just humans that were affected. Large amounts of water contaminated with radiation were released into the Pacific Ocean, meaning that even the animals suffered from this fatal accident. Number 2. Operation Plumbob Operation Plumbob may sound like some kind of fun, Sims-like little game, but it was actually just another series of US nuclear tests that went horribly, horribly wrong. You'd think that, by this point, they would have gotten the picture, but apparently not. The operation was designed to see how the average soldier would cope with the stress of the nuclear battlefield on a physical and psychological level, which honestly sounds like a catastrophe waiting to happen. On one of these tests, Dr. Robert Brownlee was asked to determine if nuclear detonations could be conducted underground. The test saw a nuclear device being lowered 500 feet below ground and detonated. But even the experts were shocked when the detonated yield turned out to be 50,000 times more intense than they'd expected, blasting fire hundreds of feet into the sky. And when the experts took a closer look at the device, they found that a 2,000 pound steel plate cap welded over the hole to contain the blast had disappeared. Nobody knows what happened to it, but it seems pretty easy to assume that the thing just got blasted to oblivion. It's a piece of metal. How can it hold its own against an atomic bomb? Number 1. Lake Chagan and once again, we find ourselves in Soviet Russia in the 1960s, revisiting the age-old question, can a nuclear weapon be used to make pretty landscapes? Again, you'd think the world would have already figured out the answer to this question, but here we are. Chagin was just the first in a series of 124 detonations as part of the Soviet's nuclear explosions for the National Economy Program. The program was designed to produce peaceful, nuclear nuclear explosions to create artificial lakes and other pretty landscapes. I'll give you one guess as to how it turned out. The nuclear yield was described as the equivalent of 140 kilotons of TNT, and Soviet officials were apparently hoping to create a lake. Well, they did that. The explosion did create a 1,339-foot wide crater 330 feet deep. The water which comes from the Chagan River filled it to a volume of around 350 million cubic feet. So it's a pretty deep lake. Of course, this lake is still incredibly radioactive, and it's mostly known today as Atomic Lake for obvious reasons. Still, some people come from far and wide hoping for the chance to swim in it. Um, I think we'll just let them do whatever they want to do. Rather, you than me, buddy. Which of these nuclear tests do you think is most likely to create some kind of big scary monster? Let us know in the comments. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.